Okay, this paper, Levels of Organization, is a review uh, from some of the things that we talked about in the fall semester, but it applies to what we're doing now, so I just want to make sure that you remember the various levels of organization. Now, most of the time when we're in life science, we're talking about cells and then groups of cells, form, tissues, etc. But we also need to remember when you were in sixth grade, you learned about the atom. Uh, you learned that the atom is a building block of matter, and matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. We're going to extend this arrow down uh, the side here. The first thing I want you to do is to cut along this line and you're going to glue this onto page 80 in your journal. Make sure that the levels of organization um, is at the top like it would be for a heading so that you have room to write below here. We need about one or two lines to write below there. So go ahead and cut and glue that in while you pause the video. Now you're going to, at the very bottom, we're going to write smallest and least complex. Okay. Yours won't be on a sticky note. Yours will be on your journal. But smallest doesn't always mean least complex. So it happens to be that these are the smallest things, and they also happen to be the least complex. Um, and then at the very top, you're going to write largest and most complex. Again, largest things aren't always the most complex, but in this case they are. We're going to divide this box into two, and then we're going to start looking at um, where we started the year out was right here with the cell. But we said that although the cell was the smallest building block of living matter, Cells also were made up of smaller compartments or uh, components, and those were called organelles. Each organelle had a specific job, like um, the nucleus controlled what was going on, the ribosomes make the proteins. All of these organelles were smaller or less complex than the cell. But those organelles were actually made of atoms. Now, atoms are on the periodic table. We know that atoms are non-living or abiotic, right? Uh, but they're also, uh, sometimes it's confusing because these are called the building blocks of matter. all matter. Now, not all matter is living. Some matter is non-living, like the parts that make up a rock or sand um, or water, two hydrogens and one oxygen. Those atoms are not living. Um, so atoms make up all matter but cells make up all living matter because they're also made of atoms. Now, an atom is the building block of matter, but a subatomic particle, for example, or IE means example, a proton, that didn't copy very well, uh, protons, neutrons, and electrons are all parts of an atom. So we could further break down 
an atom because it's made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. And if you talk to a nuclear physicist or an astrophysicist, they would say, and those protons, neutrons, and electrons are made up of something else, like quarks, and, and you could just keep going. But we're, gonna, we're just going to stop with this part uh, as our smallest and least complex on this list. Uh, so protons, neutrons, and electrons make atoms. Atoms uh, bond together to make matter. One of those things is organelles, which are the parts inside the cell that have specific jobs. If I have a group of cells, it makes a tissue. A group of tissues working together makes an organ. A group of organs working together makes a organ system. A group of organ systems working together forms an organism, although some organisms are only one cell. If I have a lot of the same organism, a lot of the same species that are living in the same place at the same time, we call that a population. For example, when they come to count how many people are in Lexington, Texas, they aren't counting dogs and cats and trees and bugs and all that. They're just counting the species of humans. And then they put that on the sign at the edge of town. Population 11, uh, 1,170, I think is what it says now. That's all one species that live in one place at the same time. If you have more than one population or more than one species living at the same place at the same time, we call that a community. Excuse me, a community. Sometimes you'll hear the word community used in a non-science way, like the community of blue. But here, it's in science, it's more technically a bunch of different populations living in the same area. Now, a community that has a bunch of different populations and has abiotic and biotic factors, we call that an ecosystem. So when you add in all of the abiotic things with the biotic, you have an ecosystem. And then I kind of divided this in two because uh, ecosystems that are in the same geographic location that share a similar climate and um, like a desert or a tundra or whatever, we call those a biome. We don't actually have a separate definition for that one, but I just want you to realize a biome is larger than an ecosystem. And then finally, all of these biomes on Earth uh, are the part of Earth where life can be sustained. We call that a biosphere. Okay. So this is from smallest or least complex all the way up to largest and most complex. Now, you're going to get these 10, you're going to cut them out, and you're going to put them where they go. For example, the cell would be the smallest functional unit of life. So you would glue it right there. Uh, the ones that you're not sure of, save those for the end. And then here in just a second, um, I will ask you to upload your picture of this so that I can grade it on Google Classroom. <laughs> 